Election Day games for kids and adults. Goodbye white, hello colorful wedding dresses. Love to shop, how to avoid online spending traps. Welcome to Life Love Shopping. I'm Andrea Jackson. It is election day, yes. Tuesday, November 6th. Yep, and I'm Michelle Yarn. Well, online shopping is convenient and, you know, it's hassle-free. But get smart and don't fall into the spending traps. Avoid the I was tipsy spree. In a self.com poll, 33% admitted to drinking and shopping. 17% admitted to being so buzzed they had no recollection whatsoever of their online shopping spree. Word to the, ri word to the wise, I think I need a cocktail. <laughs> don't drink and click, people. Also, avoid the pre-caffeine click and shop marketers. No one of the first things people do in the morning is check email, which might explain all those click now or lose your chance offers. Wait until you've at least finished your coffee before clicking on the deal. And avoid the lazy girl return policy. The best part about shopping online is not having to go to the mall, but if something doesn't fit, you have to pack it up and return it via snail mail. 56% of shoppers polled admitted they bought something online that didn't fit, but were too lazy to send it back. See, I'm afraid of that ordering clothes and getting something that doesn't fit. I'm a big fan of the accessories online, yes, but I've never done the clothes. That's easy because you don't necessarily have to fit the accessory, yeah. but if you know a line or a company or a brand and you know how it fits you, it's so easy to be able to order and shop online. It just comes right to you. You never have to go to the store. <laughs> and it's fun to get something when you arrive at home and see a package. Yeah, there. absolutely. It's a little fun yeah. surprise there. Well, trust is the bedrock of any relationship, but when the trust exits stage left, it's goodbye to security, respect, and love, and hello to anger, insecurity, and fear. However, all hope is not lost. Here are a few ways to rebuild the trust. Come clean, but not completely clean. The detailed truth can sometimes make the hurt even worse and compound the pain, extending the healing process. But do talk about what made you do it. You should open up about your own struggle and what led you there in the first place. Asking your mate for help and forgiveness is key to rebuilding your team. And be an open book. Give your partner access to your cell phone, email, and calendar. This is the point when you have to decide what's more important, your relationship or your privacy. And finally, renew your vows. I like this idea. This may be the most important part of the process to recommit married or not write it all down invite friends and family nothing seals the deal like telling the world you mean it with a vow Fall and winter can uh, bring lots of rain and snow, and if you're going to weather the storm, there's no reason you can't look fabulous doing it. Here's a look at Lucky Magazine's picks for perfect bad weather boots. These rubber Wellington boots from Burberry are perfect for splashing through rain puddles and melted snow. The classic black and brown color combo will match easily with any outfit. We're also loving the details on this pair of Red Valentino rain boots. The bow gives them just that feminine touch while the black and the buckles show your tough girl edge. For those who take hot tea with crumpets at 3 p.m. sharp or, you know, you may just enjoy watching Downton Abbey. Snag a pair of Regent Apsley boots by Hunter to look the part. And check out these Sperry Top Cider boots for J. Crew. They have a waterproof rubber sole. They're lined in sheerly perfect for mucking through whatever slush and snow the winter might send your way. All right, well, her glitter giant fail on the big screen, but maybe Mariah Carey can do a little better with glitter on the nails. Possibly so. The Divas Nail Polish Adventure with OPI was announced back in August, and now we are getting a sneak peek at the eight gorgeous colors. Not one to disappoint. Mariah went all in on the pink and the glitter, and behold, the predictably sparkly girly collection. And while the colors themselves aren't exactly earth-shattering news, the brand is using this collaboration to introduce a brand new type of nail finish called Liquid Sand. Four of the Limited edition polishes feature a textured matte finish when worn without a top coat. The suits at OPI say Liquid Sand offers a never before seen look. It's a pebbled finish that lightly shimmers with fine glitter particles. Looks, Looks pretty cool. The Mariah nail uh, polish collection will hit stores in January. Check that one yeah. out. Well, happy election day, everybody. Who do you think is going to win the battle for the White House, Barack Obama or Mitt Romney? Well, if you believe history repeats itself, Republican candidate Mitt Romney will take the title. Here Here's why. Republicans have won every November 6th presidential election since 1860. Since Election Day became standard in 1845, there have been six presidential elections held on that date, November 6th, and the Republicans have won all six of them. So today will either make or break the streak that started with the election of Abraham Lincoln. Six seems to be that lucky number. Like we said, six Republicans have won on the sixth. <laughs> Starting with 1860, Abraham Lincoln over Stephen Douglas. 1888, Benjamin Harrison over incumbent Grover 
over Cleveland. In 1900, William McKinley over William Jennings Bryan. 1928, Herbert Hoover over Al Smith. In 1956, Dwight Eisenhower over Adlai Stevenson. 84, Ronald Reagan over Walter Mondale. And no presidential showdown would be complete without a serious discussion about our first ladies. And if it's true that behind every great man there's a great woman, then the average first lady has a lot to be proud of. Here is a look at the First Wives Club by the numbers. 1,200, the number of letters John Adams wrote to his wife Abigail throughout their marriage, often seeking her political insight. His critics call Abigail Mrs. President. Harriet, 11, age at which Harriet Lane was orphaned and in the custody of her uncle, Senator James Buchanan, when Buchanan, a bachelor, became president in 1857. The then 26-year-old Lane served as his first lady. 2.5 inches, Lane had her seamstress lower the neckline of her gown from Buchanan's inauguration. Historians compare her fashion influence to that of Jackie Kennedy. Speaking of Jackie, 1951, that's the year that Jacqueline Lee Boudvier worked as the inquiring camera girl for the Washington Washington Times Herald newspaper. One of her subjects was Richard Nixon. Nine years later, that as Jackie Kennedy, she took another newspaper gig, writing the syndicated column Campaign Wife. She was pregnant and on doctor's orders to stay home while her husband campaigned. Eleanor Roosevelt, 400,000, the approximate number of troops she visited on bases and in hospitals in the South Pacific during World War II. Five foot 11, Eleanor Roosevelt's height. She's tied with Michelle Obama as the tallest first lady. Well, today there will be a lot of handshaking and baby kissing, and your handshake is really important when it comes to making the right first impression. So how do you complete the perfect, firm, yet friendly handshake? You follow these three steps. If a baby can do it, you can too. Step one, start early. Offering your hand early makes it clear that you're prepared and confident. Give me your hand. When you're five to six feet from the person, hold out your hand and tilt the fingers down. Step two, apply pressure and follow the host. Gauge how much pressure your partner puts on your hand and do the same. And don't pull away. Instead, shift your weight to your right foot. Your hand goes a little forward and they'll loosen the grip. Step three, lock eyes briefly. Eye contact during a handshake should last about three seconds. Don't dart your eyes, but don't get into a stare off either. And for bonus points, don't forget the goodbye handshake. It's just as important as the first one. And if you gave a wimpy attempt at the first time, consider the closing shake a way to redeem yourself. Another way to win over a person with cookies. Now what starts with the letter C? Cookie starts with C. Let's think of other things that starts with C. Uh, ah, who cares about other things? C is for cookie. That's good enough for me. So maybe Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney doesn't want the government funding Cookie Monster's habit, but that did not deter Family Circle from holding their annual First Lady Cookie Contest. Family Circle's First Lady Bake Off has accurately predicted the winner of the presidential election since 1992. This year, Michelle Obama's mint chocolate and walnut cookie recipe beat Ann Romney's M&M cookies with rolled oats and peanut butter. However, when it comes to your own baking, why take sides? Reach across the aisle with a hybrid version, the bipartisan cookie combines both competing recipes for a sweet compromise. Just head to our website for the bipartisan cookie re Looks recipe. delicious. Yeah. Well, even though your young children can't vote, they can still get involved with the presidential election. And you know, politics are confusing enough for adults, so you can only imagine what your kids might be thinking. So why not try some of these fun family night election activities? You can bring the celebration home and try election night bingo, filled with words you know you're going to hear during election night coverage, like Obama, Biden, Romney, Ryan, undecided. You can invite friends over and hold a faux election, have everyone cast a ballot to see which candidate would win at your party, or hold a mock election where everyone can run for president and give a speech of their own. Also, red or blue, which are you? Print out blank maps of the United States, and as the states turn red or blue on TV, kids can color them in. And guess who's next? Print a list of all 50 states and have kids write them out in the order that they think the results are going to be announced. And then you can turn drinking games into candy games. Every time someone says Romney or Obama on TV, they eat an M&M or a gummy bear. So once you've done your civic duty and received your I Voted sticker, it is time to settle in and watch the results. So why not imbibe in an election night drinking game? Here are some options if you're hosting a results party. When a state is called, you take a drink. When a state with more than 20 electoral votes is called, you finish your drink. <laughs> if a state expected to vote one way goes another, you also have to finish your drink. Now, if a state ends up being called early, 
you also have to finish your drink. And if someone mentions moving to Canada, you have to take a drink. And when Facebook or Twitter gives you info before the TV pundits do, that also means you got to take a drink. And when the election is called, you finish your drink because it's last call all around. And also, you must designate a driver if you are hosting one of those results. Yes, parties. because you're essentially going to be drinking all night. Yes. <laughs> well, if you are drinking, you may or you may not want to try one of the weirdest alcoholic beverages in the world. Check these out. Snake wine. This is predominantly found in Asia and it's Ooh. typically produced by infusing entire snakes into rice wine. I've been to a party where somebody had this. The alcohol is believed to have medicinal properties that improve everything from hair loss to sexual stamina. Wow. Pulque, this milky substance is made from the fermented sap of the maguey plant. Pulque has been consumed since the time of the Aztecs, but it fell into decline with the introduction of beer. Also, pizza and beer go hand in hand, sure. so enter pizza beer. This <laughs> culinary concoction was first devised by Tom and Athena Seaforth after they came across a surplus of tomatoes and garlic, so why not put it into beer? Sure. This one scares me, squirrel beer. Billed by BrewDog as the strongest, most expensive, and most shocking beer in the world, this $765 bottle of brew is 55% wow. alcohol, and it comes encased in a taxidermic squirrel <laughs> repurposed from Roadkill. 765 bucks. Well, there's yeah. a gift worth giving. <laughs> Stay with us. Still more to come here on Life Love Shopping. What does an actor do when his career is over? He goes into politics, of course. A look at some of our favorite actors turned politicians coming up. Plus, white is out and color is in when it comes to wedding dresses. So find out what else is trending for weddings in 2013 coming up next. And in honor of Election Day, we are sharing some of the best awkward campaign moments caught on camera throughout the show. Welcome back to Life Love Shopping. Is your man ready for marriage? Here are the key questions you should be asking yourself to determine if he is really ready to take the plunge. Has he put a ring on it? Thank you, Beyonce. Talking about wanting to get married is one thing. Showing you uh, that he wants to get married is something else. Also, do his actions match his words? Even after he puts a ring on it, ask yourself, is he acting like a man planning for marriage? Or was the ring just a way to kind of keep you quiet? Have you met his family? If he is close to his family, Family and you've never met them, you should be hearing alarms and seeing red flags. Has he told his friends about you? A man who is in love with you is not ashamed to let his inner circle know you are the one. Do you take priority over friends and family? Is he making space for you in his life? Your relationship should be a priority in both of your lives. And have you had the must-haves conversation? If you're planning a future together, then you should be having the must-have talks before time and not. These conversations including uh, or include finances, children, roles, and religion. Jessica Biel's choice of a pink wedding dress is just the latest in a line of celeb brides saying I don't to the classic white gown. But how can you incorporate a little color into your nuptials without going overboard? Bridal expert Tally Gallo from Solutions Bridal is going to show us how. Hey, Tally. Hello. Good morning. So let's talk about this. Now, we know Jessica Biel just did this, but she's not the only celebrity doing the colored wedding dress. What do you think of this trend, and do you think it's here to stay? I love it. It's here to stay. There's no more rules. So yeah. wear color if you love color. And what do you think is the appeal here? Uh, I think the appeal is it's more flattering. Mm -hmm. So, and just that option to be different. We're seeing a lot of lace, so being able to tie in color with that so you're not wearing the dress that someone else has worn. I mean, you could even tie it into the season, I guess, too, the type Absolutely. of color that you choose. Yeah. All right, so if a bride is thinking, okay, I might want to give this a shot, you have some advice. You brought in a gorgeous purple gown here. I think purples and blushes are the most yes. popular colors right now. Absolutely. We're seeing other colors, but definitely the most popular. Okay, and your first tip, you say, is to compare with the clothes already in your closet. What does this mean? Yeah, so when you walk into your closet, if you see a lot of white, mm -hmm. then, you know, definitely try on white, but try out that color just to test it out. But if there's other colors that really stand out, like pink, then that's a big sign that you're a blush girl. And clearly you love it, so you might <laughs> like it on your wedding gown. Absolutely. Okay, and then what about your skin tone? You have to consider that as well, right? Yeah, the color is flattering, so that's what's so great about this trend. Uh, but, you know, definitely pay attention to how it's going to photograph on you. If you're very fair skin, you might want to go more for that baby pink versus a very light blush pink. Okay, and then you can't forget about the other people in your wedding. There are other wedding colors. How do you make sure it meshes well together? Absolutely. So one option that's very modern is to put your bridesmaids in a whiter ivory. Okay. So maybe even have the whole guest, 
you know, beaten white and ivory that the bride That's really pops. cool way to switch it up a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Now, you can also do this with accessories if you don't want to get crazy and do a whole wedding gown. And you brought some examples. So how can we tie in color with accessories? Yeah, so like what we have on the mannequin, the belts are a big thing. It's very flattering at the waistline to have a deeper color. So that's an extra perk. Mm -hmm. um, and accessories. So whether it's that statement hair piece or it's the necklace, uh, like we have here, the pearl, you yeah. know, and blush tie-in. I love it. It's really pretty. Now, other trends you're seeing. You just got back from Bridal Fashion Week in New York, and you told us there are four other trends that are going to be happening, and one of those is sleeves. Yes, so lots of sleeves, whether it's, you know, past the shoulder, you know, to past the elbow. Okay. So we're seeing all different lengths. Now, what about lace? Everybody wears lace. It's kind of classic, but what's the difference this time around? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of brocade lace, so it's like really? a very deeper, very structured lace. Okay. So another great way, again, to not be that typical lace bride. Okay, what about low backs? This is a fun way to be really sexy without showing too much, but they've got beaded detail as well. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of illusion, so it's kind of like a sheer netting, and it oh. basically makes the beading look like it's floating on the back. So and it's definitely a big win, I think, with grooms as well. That's really pretty. And then this last one I'm curious about, short knee length options. You brought one in, it's a lace short gown. It's really pretty. What type of bride would go for this? Yeah, Natalie Portman wore it. So, okay. you know, someone that is casual, intimate, I think that's a great tie-in. And that can be your change into reception dress, True. or we're having brides wear it the whole way through. And then I think it'd be really cool too, because you can re-wear that one on your anniversary, let's say when you go out with your husband and you don't look like a crazy bride trying to re-wear <laughs> your wedding gown. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's a great tip. Well, thank you, Tally. I appreciate it. And if you guys want to get more wedding advice, and inspiration, you can check out solutionsbridal.com. Good stuff, Michelle. The saying goes, Washington, D.C. is like Hollywood, but for ugly people. Except when actors turn into politicians. Jessica Reyes from our news partner, The Daily Buzz, is here with the celebs turned policymakers. Hey, Jess. Hello, and that's right, ladies, and here they are. We start off with the 40th president of the United States. That's a bullet wound. Where'd you get that? <laughs> from a gun, man. <laughs> Where are you going? To the phone. That right there was a young Ronald Reagan back in 1954 on a series called The Dark, Dark Hours. Reagan was a very successful actor, having started from a career as a Warner Brothers contract player and later television star, start before getting into politics. And up next is one that we all know a little too well, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> Arnold went on to have a good acting career until 2003 when he was first elected to replace Governor Gray Davis as Governor of California, making him the 38th Governor of the state. And that, ladies, are two of many actors who made the switch from acting to politics. Catch me weekday mornings on The Daily Buzz. All right, Jess, thank you. Stay with us. Still more to come here on Life Love Shopping. The new guidelines helping preemies live a long and healthy life. Plus, details about the new Viagra for women. That's up next. Welcome back to Life Love Shopping. Good news for babies, purple skylines, and trash stashes. Yep, those are just some of the headlines making health news lately. And Rachel Kay is here with more. Hey, Rachel. Hey, ladies. Yes, there are new guidelines, and they are helping babies born prematurely live longer and healthier lives. In the past, babies born three months early had a very small chance of survival. A team at Nationwide Children's Hospital developed the guidelines to better care for them. They regulate everything from humidity levels to their cribs to oxygen levels in their blood, from the way their skin is treated to the nutrients they're given. Dr. Edward Shepard says years ago, the survival rate for extreme preemies was barely 10%. Not anymore. The rates of survival seem to be continuing to go up, and the latest year of survival was 84%. That's nearly eight times more than just a generation ago. Other hospitals around the country are now using those guidelines. And we all know October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but November is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. It's the fifth leading cancer killer and what Apple CEO Steve Jobs and actor Patrick Swayze died from. These are some pictures of Chicago's skyline right now for the third year in a row, Willis Tower and other iconic buildings are changing their lights to purple, which is the color of the cause to raise awareness. The Purple Skyline project in Chicago was actually inspired by a really good family friend of mine, Chuck Stepanero, who passed from pancreatic cancer. So if you want your city to go purple, just head to lifeloveshopping.com. And also this month, you may, not, may start to see a lot of these mustaches, <laughs> not on women, hopefully, on guys. <laughs> and it's not Cinco de Mayo, but Movember. The movement 
is responsible for the sprouting of mustaches on thousands of men's faces around the world. Their stashes raise awareness and funds for prostate and testicular cancer initiatives. Through their actions and words, they prompt private and public conversation around the often ignored issue of men's health. And at the end of the month, people throw gala parties where the bros with their mows dress up in costumes that best suit their mustaches. <laughs> and while we're discussing our guys, they may be happy to hear this and Female Viagra is coming, and it may be in the form of a nasal spray. Oh, no little blue pill for us ladies. The nasal spray, intended to boost female sexual arousal, is about to undergo clinical trials in Australia and Canada. The drug called Tafina is a testosterone gel that is absorbed into the body through the nose, and according to One News, the gel would absorb within a few minutes and impact a woman's libido within a few hours. Wow. So, <laughs> nasal sprays are now sexy, and at least we have that going for us ladies. I don't know. Yeah, just <laughs> Don't confuse that with your Zycam. Yeah, like you're being a Yes. <laughs> Can you yes. just see all of the guys gifting this to their women? Here you go, honey. Here you <laughs> go. What? I don't need. I don't have allergies. Why are you giving me this nasal spray? The great oh. stocking stuffer. Great. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Things are looking up, Rachel. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I got you back, girls. All right. Mm -hmm. so, well, tomorrow on Life Love Shopping, the scariest moments when it comes to those first dates and how you can both hold up under the pressure. Plus, get your home ready for the holidays from fire starters to those personalized wine bottles and the perfect hostess gifts we have got you covered well here at life love shopping we always want to connect with you so when we're not on tv you can stay in touch by liking our facebook page and you can also follow and tweet us on twitter at life love shop that does it for life love shopping thank you for joining us see you next time